male da mare che non è mare Mama's little daughter, Mama's little daughter, tell me where you've been. You sailed the seven seas, and you knocked those men on their knees. Mama's little daughter, Mama's little daughter, tell me where you've been. Hey everybody. Today's show is called Womanism, and there's several reasons why. One reason is because everybody keeps asking me in the title credits of my blog, what does a womanist production mean? You know, what does womanist mean? Another reason is because I have been mentally, emotionally, and psychologically pulverized by a book which is not something you know that I read at least a hundred books a year. I am a voracious book reader, but this new book that I have read, the book is not new, but it's new to me. Um, you know, I was interviewed recently by the comedian Roseanne Barr. Um, this has nothing to do with that. This, I don't even consider Roseanne Barr a comedian, and I'm gonna go deep into why I don't on today's show. But her memoir, Roseanne Arkey, Roseanne Arkey, I just want everyone to at least know it's out there. I really want everyone to read it, but people are so resistant and so cynical and just have a stick up their ass about <laughs> empowering themselves, about anything that's nutritious and meaningful. And this book isn't boring in the nutritious way like that. This is actually a fascinating, very fast-moving, entertaining book. I read it in a day and a half. That's how good it is. I mean, it goes like that. But it really pulverized me psychologically, emotionally, um, spiritually, intellectually. It's an important book. And so that's what I want to talk about with womanism today how I became a womanist and why this work is, why this particular book is so important. People also constantly ask me, what is my favorite blog online? Because there are so many great black women's blogs. Well, Gradient Lair by my good friend Trudy. Trudy is the most remarkable black woman, so I'm going to talk a little bit later on after my Roseanne segment. I'm going to talk a little bit about Trudy's blog. And I want to introduce you to two fabulous new artists. One of them is Janet Mock. Now, look at Janet. This girl is absolutely gorgeous. She's prettier than me. <laughs> I know that sounded so vain. So Erica Kane. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but you know, she's absolutely beautiful, Janet Mock, and I am a huge fan of hers. Janet Mock is a woman who um underwent underwent a sexual reassignment surgery to become, you know, she was always a woman from birth, but I'm saying she became it through the surgery to the liking of the general society would now consider. Um, anyway, I just love Janet Mock, and I haven't, I can't claim that I've read her book yet, but I want to introduce you to her book. Um, this is all after the Roseanne segment. Also, there's a new poem by Chris Wieg. W-E-I-G-E. -E. 
let me go back and mention something really quick before I tell you about Reckon, this poem by Chris Week. Um, let me just tell you really quickly something I wanted to say because I introduced Janet Mock as being so beautiful and, you know, she's this beautiful transsexual. Let us also mention that transsexual women who are women come in other looks. Not everybody looks totally a woman. Not everybody looks totally passable or whatever. There are some who you, you know, in other words, what I'm trying to say, let's please not be prejudiced and have this attitude that, oh, the ones that can pass are okay. You know, as long as they can pass for a woman and we don't know, then it's okay. But if they can't, then it's a problem. I am a woman and I have been called a transsexual and because I'm over six foot three, I have like strong facial features, whatever it is that people think a transsexual typically would be, um, people have caught me that. I, I actually lost a job at ABC television at all my children because someone was telling people that I was a transsexual. So I didn't get the job and they did a story on a transsexual character right when I didn't get the job. They used the story, but they didn't use me because they believed that I was transsexual. So we're going to have, you know, um, I just want to clear that up so that transsexuals don't write me saying that, you know, oh, well, you know, you're just saying because she can pass, she's okay. It's not that. This is a fabulous book Janet Mock has written. And so we're just going to give a little shine and light to our sister to let her know that she's loved, that she is beautiful, and that she's brilliant. And Chris Week, um, a great poet, he, he wrote a poem called Reckon. I believe his last name is W-E-I-G-E. -E. I'm going to read his poem last tonight. Um, that's going to be my closer. And now, to open our show on womanism, I am going to read to you what is my favorite poem of all time. Not one of my poems, but my favorite poem of all time. It is by Alice Walker, the woman who introduced me to the term womanism and the reason that I call myself a womanist. I live by the words in this poem. This poem will tell you exactly who Cola Booth is and everything that I try to be and what I stand for. Be nobody's darling. Be an outcast. Take the contradictions of your life and wrap them around you like a shawl to parry stones to keep warm. Watch the people succumb to madness with ample cheer. Let them look askance at you. And you askance reply, be an outcast. Be pleased to walk alone, uncool or line the crowded riverbeds with other impetuous fools. Make a merry gathering on the bank where thousands perished for brave, hurt words they said. But be nobody's darling, be an outcast, qualified to live among your dead. That's what Roseanne Barr is. And when we come back, we're going to get into her book, Roseanne Ark.
Most people know Roseanne Barr as a comedian. They think of her, when I mention her to people, they talk about, oh, she's so crazy, you know, this, that, and the other. People, at least the people that I know, have sort of a limited purview of Roseanne Barr. She is about so much, and she has done so much in her life. First, here's a little clip of how we all think of Roseanne, you know, just hearing her name. Oh, you are so full of it. I'm serious. A good man don't just happen. They have to be created by us women. <laughs> you think you know everything. Well, I do know everything, Crystal. A guy is a lump like this donut. <laughs> Okay, so first, you gotta get rid of all the stuff his mom did to him. <laughs> and then you gotta get rid of all that macho crap that they pick up from the beer commercials. <laughs> and then there's my personal favorite, the male ego. <laughs> And now, if you don't mind, I want to show you another side of Roseanne. And this is how I Cola Booth see Roseanne, because to me, she's not a comedian. Um, I don't consider Richard Pryor to have been a comedian. I don't consider Lenny Bruce to have been a comedian. There are certain people who make us laugh. That is their job. But there is something so profound and something that has literary merit to their work and their message, if you pay attention. There's a reason that they get under our skin and disgruntle us so much. There is a reason that these certain artists like Roseanne Barr, Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, um, George Carlin, because Roseanne Barr is really um, a combination of George Carlin and Lenny Bruce and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> She's just much more than you think. But I want you to watch this small clip from a movie I just love called She Devil that I feel is at the core of what Roseanne Barr and her work and her message are really about. I had every intention of seeing this marriage through. I'm gonna tell you something, Ruth. Life is made up of assets and liabilities. As a man, I have four basic assets. One, a home that is my castle. Two, a family that is loving and devoted. Three, a successful career that I work very hard to maintain. And four, the freedom to enjoy the fruits of my labor. But when it comes to liabilities, I have only one. That's you, Ruth. And I'm not gonna let you destroy everything I work so hard for. You're a bad mother, a lousy wife, and a terrible cook. In fact, have you looked in a mirror recently? I didn't even think you're a woman. Do you know what you are? You're a she-devil. Great dramatic acting that, you know, we don't expect from Roseanne Barr. I have such fantasies of her making a dramatic film. I would like to see her write a dramatic film because I've now read Roseanne Arkey. Um, she's a genius. There's so much that, you know, and let me just bring you in. She's a critical thinker, ladies. She's more than a comedian. She has to do the comedian thing to keep from getting killed, basically. She's an empath. These are people who feel so deeply. They are so connected to other people's emotions and feelings because these are people who have been abused. I'm one. I'm an empath, I feel. People who have been abused as children, who have seen incredibly death-defying, shocking, horrible events, you know, witness things that children shouldn't witness, some of them often grow up to become overly empathetic to pain in other people, and not just people, but animals, nature. These people vibe on the feelings of others. They plug in and they become sort of overwrought in fighting and illuminating and highlighting issues that most of the society wants to hide and doesn't want to talk about. Roseanne Barr is the queen of that. 
she, to keep from getting killed, has to present everything as a joke. As he, he we're gonna laugh now, you know, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna... But she's sliding in there steadily, and she's done this since the beginning, since before she was famous. This has been who she is. Um, she slides in there with monumental human issues from anywhere in the world. It's not just from her personal perspective as a woman who has experienced being overweight, has experienced being um, white and Jewish, has experienced living, you know, whatever it was her personal thing. When you read Rose Anarchy, and you really, sisters, you must read this book. You will love it. You will absolutely love this book and the message in it spiritually. Spiritually and psychologically. Oh, you've got to read this book, Rose Anarchy. But when you read the book, you will see through the whole comedy thing that she does. You know, she presents herself in the world as a comedian. She's really crying for us, crying out for us. If she could sing, she would be Billie Holiday. She would be Streisand or Whitney Houston or Edith Piaf if she could sing because the giganticness of what she has to say about patriarchy, the oppression of women, the oppression of black people, Yes, the oppression of black. I mean, Roseanne is no fucking joke. She gets in there. Everybody's oppression is her oppression. Transsexuals, gay people, um, firemen, <laughs> Jewish girls, her Jewish brother who was beaten up nine times before he was the age of nine because he's Jewish. And this is in the United States in, you know, where she grew up in a all Mormon town. Um, Chinese people, anything you can think of. She is an empath and someone who gets it and who cares. That's really the most important thing. If you remember back how much you loved Roseanne, the comedian and her comedy show, Roseanne, you will think of um, you know, she was a populist. She was the proletariat person for us all. But mainly the show is about giving. That's what the Roseanne show, from what I see it, is for as, you know, for giving. My two favorite episodes of the Roseanne show, by the way, is the one where DJ had to kiss a black girl in the school play and he didn't want to do it. And Roseanne that was a very, very special episode. A lot of black people love that one. And then my other one is the one where Becky got her period. It was so real. It was just so, I mean, you don't get that on television. You don't get that feeling like the Be Becky lost, got her period episode. Watching normal movies and television. This is the magic of Roseanne. Um, showing right there as a comedian, but I'm just trying to get you to understand this book, Rose and Arky, takes you so much deeper and gives you that same feeling though, that same feeling of I'm home. And that's what it was like reading her book. It was a feeling of like, I am home. I know this person through her because Roseanne believes that God is a woman and all her life since she was a little girl she has addressed God as she and her and she has some major uh, gripes with God not only does Roseanne think God is a woman God Roseanne is like bitch why are you fucking us up like this why are we suffering like this why is this and that happening she questions the universe and through doing it she gives us permission to do it she gives us permission to question the universe, to ask about things that we've never thought of, and to, to acknowledge our pain so much as women. We are in so many boxes, especially black women. 
we are in so many boxes that we don't understand. Not everybody has the same level of intellect, understanding, or are able to face things so clearly. This book helps you do that. It gives you permission and it really helps you start to ask yourself the right questions. That right set of questions that will lead you. Roseanne's not much of a preacher, but she's damn good at leading you through laughter to ask yourself the hard questions and to face yourself and to come out winning. That's what the book does is that you love yourself when you're finished because Roseanne loves us. Roseanne is a person who loves women. She respects women. She respects our lives. That is why I want you to read the book. She really, really, really understands what we need to nourish ourselves. It's real wisdom. I'm not saying this because, oh, Cola just has become friends with Roseanne and she loves Roseanne. Bullshit. I'm friends with quite a few celebrities. You know that. You know that I'm friends with a whole lot of people. Roseanne is for real. She's not even about herself. She is someone who gives every time, every time, every interview, every performance, every whatever, everything she says and does. She's someone who constantly is conscious of reality and of life and what's wrong in this world. And she gives. She gives every time. Please read Roseanne Arkey by Roseanne. I'm going to leave you with something she wrote in the book that's really tiny. But this is so huge to me. And she has a million of these. I'm just giving you one. But she has a million of these all through the book. But there's a part in the very beginning of the book where she says, instead of believing in God and morality, we should be beholding of God and morality. And I so agree. And it's really brave of her to say that. You know, it's so easy to believe something and wrap up in it like Santa Claus and elves and shit and not live by it. But like she said, beholding it, which means protecting, coveting it, holding it up, respecting and presenting it, being it. You know what I mean? Um, I think if, if love which is what religions are supposed to be about. If love was handled that way by human beings more, and I think the closest we get to that is our mothers. The love of a mother usually is about the closest we get to it being beholden. But if more of us did that, then these religions would be worth the shit. They would matter. They would mean something. You know? And I started my own religion, the womb, because I am a womanist and because of everything Roseanne points out in the book, her whole journey is really the journey of, I think, every woman. I don't care what you are. You know what I mean? You could be Siberian, African, Chinese, transsexual, born a woman, whatever. If you are female then this is the book that really, I feel, presents some things in a comical way because the book is funny as hell. I mean, every two seconds there's a, you know, a funny one-liner, you know. It's Roseanne Barr, so <laughs> she's not going to let you get out without having a belly laugh, but I'm just saying, she's so much more. And for people who just think of her as, oh, the crazy lady, the, you know, the TV mom, all that stuff. That's just a sliver of who Roseanne is. Anyway, please, I, and at the end of the show, I'm going to remind you one more time, but I just please want you to treat yourself to Roseanne Arkey by Roseanne. This is an important book. 
Um, a lot of us care about Monsanto. We care about the environment. Yes, the environment. Um, so many issues. I mean, it's just endless. Everything in here that she deals with. Um, I can't praise it enough. It's the best autobiography that I've read in at least 20 years. I'm 44. And not counting my own autobiography, which of course I'm prejudiced and think mine's is just a masterpiece, but not counting my own. This is the best autobiography that I have read in, in over 20 years. It's really an important book. It's really not about Roseanne. It's not about you. It's not a, you know, it's one of those books that is just internationally, universally about everything. It's about everything. And you have to read it to get it. But once you do read it, you will feel empowered and you will feel like you can ask yourself certain questions now and you're gonna like the answers because the book encourages you to accept yourself to love yourself and to affirm yourself that's what womanism is that's what womanism is so please buy Roseanne Archie by Roseanne <laughs>
Janet Mock is somebody who I feel can move us forward. And that's why I want you to read her book, Redefining Realness. It's called Redefining Realness by Janet Mock. What is womanism? Womanist is to feminist what lavender is to purple. That's what Alice Walker said when she introduced the term womanist in her book, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens. I call myself a womanist because of Alice Walker. Um, she is really the first and greatest hero of my life being influenced um, I'm not in many ways I'm not like her and we have things that I'm sure she doesn't like about me if she knows about me and I believe she does know about me um, but so much of my survival is because of Alice Walker and so much of my mental strength and overcoming things that I overcame in my life is because of Alice Walker and her books such as um, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, um, In Love and Trouble, Stories of Black Women, um, The Color Purple, The Same River Twice, Once, her poetry collection, um, just everything. And of course, my favorite book of all time by Alice Walker. I shouldn't be telling all this because I'm going to actually do a whole show on Alice Walker in the future. But my favorite book by her is Possessing the Secret of Joy because I am vaginally infibulated, which is what that book was about. Earlier, I read a poem by Alice Walker to open the show. Um, it's hard to tell you what Alice Walker means to me or meant to me as a young black African girl who had just learned English at age 14 in America. It took me till I was 14 to master English. It's so heavy um, explaining to you why not only am I a womanist and feminist, why not only do I dare to be nobody's darling, but why I so emphatically espouse womanism and push womanism. Ultimately, ultimately, Alice Walker believes that every human being should be loved and that every animal and every grain of sand, every drop of the sea, everything that we can see, feel, smell, touch, hear, Ultimately, Alice Walker believes that we have an obligation to love it and to affirm it. That is what the womb, what woman, and what God ultimately is all about, or it should be. So I'm proud to be a womanist and so anyway, the poem is called Reckon by Chris Week. His name is spelled W-E-I-G-E, -E, just in case I'm not saying it right. And the poem goes like this. F equals I equals N equals A equals N equals C equals E equals P equals O equals E equals T equals R equals Y finance poetry my name's good afternoon great how's the weather in you and now our country is afraid of our country our youth raped by institutions of learning generations contemplate a labyrinth of illogical unnatural systems what facts have ideas sent and how did we all forget? They will stencil new flags on his keynote address, thank you very much, asking, what does the recordings and what remembered worlds will astonish us? 
in the longer demonstration streets, routine protests marching on Calcutta, the whole surging man, will our replies, will our replies be heard? That's Reckoned by Chris Week. There's a line that I made famous in one of my old movies. Me love you long time. <laughs>